going to talk about the quotient rule now. So this is a method for finding the derivative when you have two functions uh, in a quotient, one divided by the other. It looks a little daunting when you first look at this thing, but you can see that uh, g of x is just showing up here and here once as its original form, once as a derivative, and then on the bottom is all g of x. And then you've got f of x, or the numerator, is the two spots in between. So when you kind of look at that, you can see it. it's not so confusing once you see kind of how it's laid out. Um, another way I was told to look at this is uh, if we use the word low to mean low and high to mean high and D for derivative. Then the quotient rule with the idea that this, this is our high term right here and this is our low term down here. The quotient rule can be written as low d high minus high d low all over low low. I was informed that um, in Tagalog, low low means grandpa. And so in my classes, we like to say that uh, we're going to do low d high minus high d low. And don't forget grandpa. Because what happens actually is that you start simplifying your numerator because it's much more complicated. And you work your way through the problem, you finish your numerator, put a box around it, and move on to the next problem. And it turns out you forgot grandpa the whole time. So there's your, your tip for the day. Don't forget grandpa. So let's try one. So we're supposed to start with, uh, with low. x squared plus 1 times the derivative of high. That would be 5. Minus the high part times the derivative of the low part. And this is all over grandpa. So if I simplify this down, I've got 5x squared plus 5, and then minus 10x squared plus 4x. So I kind of have two distributions going on there. I'm distributing here and also here. So I'm getting, you know, it's like I'm multiplying everything by negative 2x, in essence there. Um, and this is, I'm just going to keep on writing low, low on the bottom. And then if I simplify this top out, I'm going to have minus 5x squared plus 4x plus 5 all over x squared plus 1 squared. And you actually don't foil out the bottom. You just leave it like this. All the answers I've seen in the back of textbooks, the uh, solutions for AP calculus exams, they just don't foil this. They leave it as it is. Uh, just one last little problem to look at. We can mix in trig with this if we want. So same idea, low d high. I would have sine x times the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x, minus cosine x times the derivative of sine x. And this is all over sine x squared. So right here, this is the derivative sine x, and this one is the derivative of cosine x. If I multiply all this stuff out, 
I will have negative sine squared x minus cosine squared x all over sine squared x. Um, I can apply a trig identity here. This is the same as negative sine squared x plus cosine squared x over sine squared x. And this, as we remember, is just 1. Uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1 is the identity there, Pythagorean identity. So I've got negative 1 over sine squared x, which is OK. Or you could go one step further and say this is negative cosecant squared x, which is a nice little pat on the back 